Hi there folks, thanks for joining me. Um, in the classes at the moment we're doing something that involves a little bit of perspective and I thought maybe it would be useful to share that. I know that perspective is something that a lot of people struggle with. Um, we're going to be concentrating later on on linear perspective, which is the tricky one. But before we do that, I just wanted to sort of make you feel a bit more comfortable with the idea of perspective. Perspective comes in many forms and at its most basic it's simply about trying to create an illusion of three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. So trying to create an illusion of depth on your canvas or on your paper. Now the most simple form of that is something that we learn as children and it's overlapping. So it's the idea that if we drew an apple and then we had another apple behind that it would create an illusion of depth on the page uh, to overlap those two apples. Um, another example of it is size and vertical position and a great example of this is found in the flying ducks that Hilda Ogden had on her wall in Coronation Street and it's the thought that if we have a large shape in the sort of lower down on the canvas and a smaller shape, repetition of shape, higher up and a smaller one again higher up. It creates this sense that they must be going off into the distance somehow. There's some sense of depth there as well. Um, there's also atmospheric or uh, aerial perspective, which is another form. And um, that's simply the fact that if we have an image like this, it's, there should be more contrast of tone, more contrast of colour and more contrast of texture in the foreground. And as you fade off into the distance, things become more neutral um, and less contrasting as they go off into the distance. And again, that will help to create a fantastic sense of depth in your paintings. But forced linear perspective, which is the, the technical term uh, for what we're about to look at, is the one that a lot of people struggle with. So for that, I'm going to take you into the kitchen. And uh, your kitchen is a great place to practice your perspective drawing. Let's go. Okay, folks. So uh, we're set up here in the kitchen. And one of the great benefits of working in an area like this um, is that it gives you an opportunity to look at a lot of converging lines. Because most kitchens have worktops, wall units, all sorts of lines going on uh, that will converge off into the distance. The important first step is to become aware of your eye level. And your eye level is a horizontal plane that um, stretches right across, straight across your field of vision. And um, it's a distance, the distance, oh, here's the cat. It's the distance between the ground and your eyes. It doesn't alter if your head's tilted up and your gaze is looking up or your gaze is looking down. Your eye level is still that horizontal plane that stretches right across your field of vision. Um, Become aware of that and just maybe plot some points around the room. I've already started to do that and you might see little faint dots on my page here. I've already started to plot a few of those points around the room for myself. Um, the next stage is that you need to decide where on this page do you want your eye level to be. And that's a decision that you have to make as the artist. So when you're looking at your subject matter, try and think to yourself, well, where does the interest lie? Is the interest below my eye level? In which case I would put the eye level high on the page and have an awful lot of stuff below my eye level, the interest, or is the interest above my eye level? In which case I would keep the eye level very low and I would be looking up at all of this interest. Now, to be honest, there's, there's useful things for us here, perspective wise, above and below the eye level. So I'm gonna make my eye level just about halfway on the page, maybe slightly below. Um, and I'm gonna start by just lightly introducing that, just a little kind of hesitant line. I think I want it somewhere about here. I'm just gonna lightly put that across so you can hardly see it. Um, but it just gives me a little indication of where that is. I feel as though I'm doing this in pen. I would recommend you do it in pencil. <laughs> so you can rub it out afterwards, but it helps you to see what I'm doing, I suppose. So I've just done that very lightly across there, and I've got a few other dots as well, just to help me with some of the proportions. Uh, proportion and perspective are two very different things, so try maybe not to get the, the two mixed up. Proportion is about height to width ratio of shapes, and perspective is all about depth and creating that illusion, as I said, of three dimensions on your flat surface. So now that I've got my eye level, I know where that is, what I need to now look at is vanishing point. Now because I'm looking flat on to this wall, we're looking at one point perspective. I mentioned earlier that there's one point, two point, three point, etc. Um, this is simple one point perspective and that's for if you're looking flat on to a wall as we are here. If we're looking into a corner or onto a corner, an exterior corner, 
um, two point perspective would come into play and you can play around with three and four point perspective but we'll save that for another video. Um, so the vanishing point is on my eye level. Vanishing points are, lateral vanishing points are always on your eye level and it's directly in front of me, so straight ahead. Uh, so in my case, it's just to the right of the doorway, the door frame there. So I want that to sit in about here on my image. I've already got a wee dot. So I'm gonna put my vanishing point on my eye level, right in line with that. So it's a little bit like crosshairs. I've got the edge of the door is gonna come down here somewhere. And I've got my eye level that comes across here and they meet at that point there. Now, every converging line in front of me right now is converging on that single point or will converge on that single point. I'll force it to converge and that's why it's called forced linear perspective. Um, I could start just by doing a drawing of the, the, the wall that I see in front of me. So I'm just going to quickly scribble out uh, a sense of proportion roughly of what things are. Mark, that's going to be roughly where the lights are. I want to get the top of the door somewhere in about here, I think. Um, the width to the height of the door, I'm just going to do a quick measure of. Um, maybe one of, maybe a little bit more. So take that. Um, that should be fine, actually. Somewhere about there. It's going to be that. Uh, maybe a little bit further across, actually. I'm going to put that about there. So none of this is to do with perspective. All of this is about proportions and proportioning the shapes that I see in front of me to fit on the page. Now at this stage, it's really useful for me to be able to look at it and think, um, is this going to take in everything that I want? All of the image that I want. And that glass pane there is going to drop below my eye level. So it comes down below it. I want to come down below as well. Just I think we'll speed this bit up for you so that you can get an idea of what I'm looking at. So folks, what I've got here is a very scrappy looking kind of sketch here of just the far wall that's in front of me with all of the perpendicular lines, kind of upright lines in front of me. And um, what I now need to do is to create all of these converging lines for the edges of the worktop, the edges of units, the light, etc., all that kind of stuff, the extractor fan. And um, all of those things now need to converge onto that vanishing point that I talked about. Um, now, if you are noticing a little bit of variation uh, between the camera lens and you know some of the curvature of it, that's possibly to do with um, the kind of wide angle of the camera lens and the fish eyeing of the lens. Um, so don't worry too much about that. But I've got my sketch here and I've got my vanishing point, just to be reminded, sitting there just above the height of the bottom of the window on the door and just to the right um, of on the door frame there. That's exactly the point I want for my vanishing point. So I go back now, maybe this area here is quite a, 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 an obvious mark or point for me there. Um, I want the edge of that unit now, the worktop, to be converging on that point. So that'll be coming across there like that. Putting the width of the worktop coming down there. The edge of the hob there as well, let's put that in. So I want to look at where that is in relation to this upright here. In my vision, it's just to the right of that. It might be slightly different on the camera. So I've got the hob coming in this direction now. So it's converging on that point. Uh, can't see the far side of the hob. It goes off the page for me. Um, the edge of the sink there on the right hand side. Again, it's going to be coming across. That line will converge across there and the edge of the sink will be running at an angle like that through there. I can just about see the units off to this side actually. So I'm going to put a little suggestion of the base of that. Now it comes to just about there on the window and a little bit above my eye level. So again, back to my vanishing point and that will come across there. It's a little bit like a sort of dot to dot exercise. If you decide where you want to start or end this converging line, you just take it back to that point across and continue it on. Let's try the, the extractor fan. So the extractor fan for me ends there got my vanishing point here, so the edge of that extractor fan is running down like that. 
that run through there. It's got a bit of depth to it as well, so we've put in that added a little bit of depth that runs along there. You can almost just see the edge of that, so I'll just suggest that in there. Um, any of the lines on the extractor fan itself, so the filter bits, there's one stops there, there's one maybe a bit further across here, there's one that goes off the page as well, so it'll start there. And I'll go back to my point, I'll take that down there, this one will go this way, this one will go that way. Go across to the units on this side. You can see hopefully how it actually makes drawing something that's really complex relatively simple. Uh, once you've got the basics in place, you're just joining these dots and it means that we can get in all of the detail pretty quick. So just about there, maybe watch, we'll do the bottom of the washing machines, which for me comes down to about there somewhere. Bring that across, the bottom of the washing machine is running at an angle like that. Bottom of the units, step back slightly, so they come back to that point, back to this, through there. And that'll just go off the page down there somewhere. There's the lower door of the units. So I'll come through there. And they're coming through at an angle like that. Actually, just stop a wee bit shy of that. Actually. Um, and then I've got the high level units here. They're coming in probably about there. So I go up, join my dot, and up it goes. I can just about see the top of the units. They're just sitting in about there, in fact. So I'm going to take them in just to give a little suggestion. The top just coming in about there. Then I've got the far end of the wall, which comes into there. A little suggestion of door frame coming down the side. Handle of the door. Now there's tiles on the floor. Again, they're all kind of going straight away from me. All of these lines, I should say, folks, are parallel. Um, so these converging lines, uh, if we were to look at this room from a plan view, from up above looking down, all of them would be running directly away from me, parallel to each other. And that's why they go to the same vanishing point. Um, if they were a slightly different angle, then they would be going to a slightly different vanishing point. But they're not. They're all parallel, which is great. Makes it easy for us. Just introduce all of these. Suggest depth as well. Okay. So folks, I think I'll continue on. I'll just scribble away here and we'll speed the video up again for you. But you get the idea that all of these are converging to that single point. And I'll keep doing that for any other lines that I encounter on the way. Okay, folks, I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, I've got a very sketchy, sort of expressive uh, drawing of the kitchen here. But you can see that this point here where we started with the vanishing point, all of these lines, as I say, that are parallel to each other in reality are now converging on that point. They'll all come down to meet that point. Uh, even the edge there that's really steep, it'll be coming right down there, Let's steepen it up even more to meet the edge of, to meet that single vanishing point, which is sitting on my eye level. And remember, I decided where that eye level was going to sit on the page after becoming aware of where it was in reality. Um, and once you've got a hang on this, really you can draw anything. It doesn't matter how complicated it gets. Um, in a future video, what we'll do is show you two-point perspective and perhaps three and four-point perspective if we ever get that far. Um, but for now, if you head off and maybe try practicing your one-point perspective and see how you get on with that,
So folks, we've looked at um, several different forms of perspective there. We started off by thinking about overlapping shapes, uh, by vertical position and size, atmospheric perspective as well. So we were looking at the idea that uh, things should be more contrasting in the foreground, less contrasting in the distance, and cooler in colour in the distance as well. And that will help to create depth. If you couple all of those things with the single point forced linear perspective that we've just looked at, um, you should get great depth into your studies. So feel free to send me your efforts, uh, contact me through my website, um, or pop me an email. And it would be great to hear from you. Thanks for joining me again. Thank you.